Welcome in everyone to ClayshareCon day four. We have a really great demo scheduled right now. We have a strong arm demo. And if you don't know what strong arm is, well, you are gonna be floored by what we show you next. We have uh, a whole list of people joining us. <laughs> so we have Mark and Carol um, and Catherine and Patrick and Laurel and whole, everybody joining us from Strong Arm and they're going to show us how to use a Strong Arm and tell us about Strong Arm and how it came about and what they're doing with it. So, hey everyone at Strong Arm, how are y'all doing? Good, doing great today. Good morning. So glad to have you here with us. Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, yourselves and Strong Arm and uh, how it came about? All righty. Um, I'm Carol Bell, and um, we are currently in my uh, pottery school, Turkville Craft School in Fairport, New York. And my husband, Mark, is actually the uh, originator of the Strong Arm Centering Tool. Uh, and I'm actually here today to do the first demo, which I'm sure everybody out there is dying to see this. So I'm going to get started, and then Mark can talk over what I'm doing or continue Perfect. on after I'm finished. So, Perfect. Um, anyways, yeah. this, this is a strong arm centering tool. It's an amazing piece of equipment. Um, it literally saved my pottery career. Um, you know, as I got older, I started having issues with my wrists and my hands and my shoulder. And this tool is just an amazing tool for centering from small amounts up to very large pieces of clay quite easily. Um, I'm going to today just sort of demo various small piece. This is about a two pound piece. So I'm going to actually get right into it and get started. So the first thing I want to do is just kind of wet this, not very, not a lot of water, just a little moisture and try to get this kind of right on the center, give it a good push down. And the better you have this kind of rounded, a nice rounded shape, the easier it is to center. Then the other thing is this tool only does two things. It centers the clay and it opens the clay, it opens the floor um, and adds a lot of compression also as you're opening the floor. So it uh, is a tool that is great uh, if you have issues with any kind of S cracks or anything like that, this will really help out. So you want this, the speed of the wheel can go relatively fast, a little bit of water on there. And this is the paddle arm, the centering arm. And you bring this over. And you don't want to push down. If you hear it hitting the bat, that means you're pushing it too far down. You want to pull it in towards the ball of clay. So you pull it in towards the ball of clay. And this hand, you can hold the sponge or just with your hand. All you're doing with your left hand is controlling just the top of the pot of the clay, just trying to keep it level. And this happens really fast. It's already centered. Okay. Then I just take my thumb and kind of make like a little well in the middle. A little bit of water there. And this is the opening finger. And I like to kind of hold this here and also right here. And I want to guide it as close to the center. As you notice, this is actually a fulcrum. So it's not going to hit directly center on this plate until you actually have this closed all the way. And also you do, you set the height here too, which we're gonna go over that with our next presenter. And then you just very gently push it down, nice and slow. When you get to the bottom, you will notice that it's very common, it's very common to have some of this clay on here that you wanna take off. No, it's not. Not my favorite hands. No, I think I got it. Yep, I got it. All right. To avoid that, if you're using this type of bat, a little bit of water in the center. I try to use as little water as possible because by doing that, your clay is in like perfect condition to continue making a pot. So now this is where I want to just control once again, just the top edge of the clay and I pull it out as far as you want to go. Nice and slow and steady. And just sort of control this top edge. You don't have to touch the side at all. Just control this top edge. 
and bring it out as far as you want it. And voila, you are ready to start throwing your pots. Fantastic. Folks have a, a couple of questions. They want to know um, if they have this, can it attach to any wheel? And if they want to travel with it for their teaching, can it come off and travel? So how would that work? Answer that one. Can you repeat the question? Yes. Um, so people want to know is um, can, can, can the um, strong arm be detached and can people travel with it? Certainly can. Um, you know, just to get it out of your way, this just lifts off. You don't want this on your wheel. Um, we'll get into some of the installation aspects of it, but it's simply one bolt right here. Um, you know, by and large, it takes a couple of minutes to install it. Once you've done it, it would take next to no time, but yeah, we have guys that travel and uh, do demonstrations with the strong arm reason, especially with uh, some of their bigger pots. And uh, so, yeah, the, the answer to the question is yes. Oh, look at that. This is my little chamois. I don't know if you guys out there have one of these. It's a leather uh, chamois that generally is used for cleaning, you know, finishing your car to get all the uh, water droplets off it. Uh, automotive store. It's amazing what the kind of nice, beautiful uh, lip it leaves on your pottery. And there we go. Nice little bowl. Two pounds. And that's it. you have any other questions for us, Jess? Folks were asking if there's a discount on them. And there is a discount, but only for the first 25 orders. And that discount's on claysharecon.com. If you just go check it out. So you can find out there. Folks are saying they have them and they have one and they love it. It saves them time and hand strength. So um, someone asked, they're just learning to throw. Will a strong arm help them learn? Or should they not use it till they've already um, learned how to throw? I would say that there's, you really have to learn to center clay. Um, you know, the old fashioned way using your hands, just, uh, you know, pick an instructor or watch a lot of your videos to see the correct way to get started with centering and opening your clay. So you really have a feel for what does centered clay feel like. Um, but I've had students after even their first course here, will start using the tool, especially if they want to start making pots over three pounds or four pounds. This is just, you can't be using this it just, it's so wonderful it, it just it, it doesn't eat up your energy like doing it the you know the traditional way is very taxing on your body it's very exhausting um using this tool you saw how simply and how fast uh this was brand new clay we're using uh laguna number 66 clay and this batch is a nice consistency i would say if you have clay that's too hard just get your clay a little bit softer um you know just to make it a lot easier but yeah, I would say, you know, someone who's had at least a course or two under their belts, it's very appropriate to go ahead and try this tool if you're having difficulty centering or you want to start taking your pots up to a bigger size. So um, I'm going to let Mark continue here while we get the next person set up. Okay. Fantastic. And this comes in right or left-handed versions, correct? So either either way? That. Mark will answer that um, one. This is basically the, this is the standard construction for the tool. Operates with your right hand. Um, you use your left hand to do the controlling of the play. Um, in some instances where people have, you know, just drastically lost their ability to use the right hand, I can make one the other way. There are little complications mechanically with the wheel. However, um, you use them both hands to send your clay regardless. So there's not a smart or a not smart hand in the process. Um, it does not matter the rotation of the clay. That, that's a big one. Whether it turns clockwise or counterclockwise, tool doesn't care. Um, another thing is, is you know, when uh, Carol was throwing, she was talking about compression. 
with new clay or fresh, freshly plugged clay, you do not need to wedge it. That's also a big plus right here. So um, the tool takes care of it. If the amount of force that you're using to move the clay is far beyond what your physical characteristics do. Fantastic. Is there a maximum amount of clay that you can use with a strong arm? Is there a maximum amount of clay that you can use with a strong arm? Well, um, sky's the limit. Depends. You know, I learned so much from uh, you know the people that, that do buy and use these. Um, you can go very small to it. It really a lot of it depends on how much you center. If you center low, you know, on by and large, you're 15, 16, up to 20 pounds with the standard arm. Um, there are ways to go bigger. Uh, some people stack throw, um, where they'll center a large piece and then they'll stack and then center again to increase your size. But uh, yeah, it is, you know, depending on your creativity and what it is that you're trying to do, it's pretty limitless. Oh, I've had people out throw their jumps before. <laughs> yes, it does happen. And so a lot of people are surprised you don't need to cone up and down. No need for that. Um, this panel will, will, between the panel and the force that it, it gives and, you know, the opening finger, you don't need to wait the clay out. You're moving it and uh, you're using a lot of force. And so you don't need this particle alignment and compression. It's one and done. And that's the beauty of this piece. Okay. And then some folks have more than one wheel. What it, can they use the same one on the same wheel? Or is there one that they can get that's universal? Uh, people have more than one wheel, not necessarily the same brand. So can the same strong arm be used, you know, to transfer from one pottery wheel to the other? Yes, uh, that's why it's uh, good in a, a group studio. Um, here's a real simple one is you, you have this set up and this is your centering opening wheel. You just pull your bat off and put it on the other wheel. Um, yeah, it only takes a minute or two to center, so it's boom and then over. Um, you can get multiple brackets for this. Uh, I'm more than happy to do that. And once they're set up, they're set up. So um, you can take your strong arm, the wooden part, the functional part of the tool, and simply just pick it up and put it on the other wheel. And just so everybody knows, this fits all wheels, no matter what wheel you have there's a version that will work for your wheel, correct? Yes, Mark just needs to know what kind of wheel you have and he will tell you which is the best option for you. Well, the, um, the, uh, the one thing, the first thing I learned about the building of the tool is how little I know about pottery wheels. There's hundreds of them. There's all types, there's boxed in ones, there's ones overseas and uh, that are built completely different. Um, there's different year models. That's one of the things about the tool and, and us is I will go extra lengths to make sure to outfit any wheel. And uh, uh, I've not been stumped yet. Uh, I'm glad to custom build one if I need to, but uh, that is the great thing about the tool. And that's my motivation is that anybody who wants to use this tool is able to use this tool. So it fits with all wheels. Everybody's asking, does it fit blank wheel? Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Yes. 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 <laughs> Long winded yes. <laughs> okay. So uh, I'm Pat, and I'm going to give you some more of the nuances of using the strong arm. When you are putting the strong arm on your wheel, what I like to do is make sure that I take a nice little rubber rip and to make sure that I just slide it underneath of the paddle to make sure that it's the right bite. 
If you have to adjust it, you're given a Allen's wrench and the Allen's wrench is used on the base of the, of the arm to up and lower the, the, um, the band to find the exact height that you need. I like to make sure that a rubber um, rib will fit under it. That way I know I get a nice swimming motion. Now, before I start, I also like to take a little wet jack sponge and I like to wet the paddle just to make sure that it's nice and moist and it's not gonna stick to the clay. I've had that happen before. So just a very light touching of water on the paddle will help. When you're setting your depth, what I like to do is I put the, um, the back on the wheel, I bring over the, the opening arm and I'll take a finger and I'll make sure that at least, like my, I use my index finger on my left hand. And as long as it comes up to my last knuckle and there is, there's a little wiggle room, that's the depth that I have to set the bottom of my pot. Sometimes I'll do two fingers for, for an extra thick bottom. You have a nice firm bottom of my pot. But I usually use that at least one finger of width from the back top um, to allow for enough clay to remain at the bottom of the pot. And then, now I'm throwing with one and a half pounds of clay. So I just think, and, and if you notice with Carol, Carol's left-handed, I'm right-handed. And we're using the same, we're using the same strong arm. And when you're using the strong arm, you point it in, pretend you're closing the door. That's basically the, the feeling you want to have. You're closing the door. And a little bit of wet in my hand. Now what I'm doing is basically pushing down and in to create uh, a form or a tunnel, a tunnel effect. So that I have a tunnel effect of the clay going through my hand and against the paddle. And I have a nice centered one and a half pounds with a little hole in the top. And then put a little bit of water in there like Carol did. Now you'll see something slightly different from Carol and I. When Carol opened hers, she pulled left. Well, I'm going down and I push right. Same wheel, same process. You can go either direction. If you're a lefty, that way. If you're a righty, you push out that way. And then from that point on, you're done. You're centered and you can start throwing your pot and you can start making wherever you would like. Now, what I like to do, I'm very much into texture. I love doing textured pots. So what I'll do is I'll get a big lump of clay, like maybe four or five pounds, and I will center it and then I'll open it, but I'll only open it, let's say, oh, I'm gonna only open it maybe this far. That gives me a really nice thick wall. So at this point, I can use a wiggle wire and go down the sides with a wiggle wire and then open it up and the wiggle, of course, all opens up. You can use um, scoring tools. You can use all different types of texturing tools at this point with a nice thick outside wall. The important thing is, if you're doing that type of a thing, just make sure everything is nice and smooth on the outside before you add your texture. The nice thing about this tool is it enables you to open up in a thickness for whatever you're throwing. If you want to throw a thick pot or a tall cylinder, then you want to have a thick wall and you're going to pull it all the way up. If you want to throw a low bowl, you would just keep pushing outward and outward. And now you have your low bowl. You can work on compressing your bottom a little bit. You know, I like nice compressed bottoms. And then you can just pull up from there. Really, it's anything you want to do. This tool will allow you to get things ready. Before I had the tool, I could not throw a chip and dip set. I could not throw a pasta bowl. But once I got this tool, I could throw five pounds of clay, seven pounds of clay onto here, open it all the way out, and then just start lifting there to create a bowl. Very versatile. Any questions, Jess, while we uh, switch yeah. over to um, another lump of clay? 
So there's a question that the, they can hear the paddle hitting the bat. Do you have to pull in and up at the same time to get this to work or they just pull in? Okay, so the question is, they hear the paddle hitting the bat, so do you have to pull up and in at the same time or just? Yeah, you're hearing that. Are you pushing, I guess, are you pushing? Oh, yeah. They want to know if there's two directions happening or just one, so. Um, there are, there's two directions happening. You're pulling in as you're pushing down. Okay, so with your hand, but you don't have to pull in and up with the paddle itself. The paddle no, you just pull no, in. No. That's the question. Paddle is question. just in. Paddle is like you're closing the door. The paddle is just inward. It's it's with your opposite hand, whether your left hand or right hand. It's your opposite hand that you're using to push the clay down and in. But with the paddle, you're just pulling in towards you. You're not lifting the paddle. You're not pushing the paddle down. The paddle is just being pulled towards you. And then it's just held steady with a with a inward force as you're pushing down and in with your opposite hand. So we're going to try something a little bit bigger. We hope. Yeah, when we use one of these. Big one is uh, <laughs> your bats should securely fit your wheel. It's, it's just a good thing, regardless of what you're throwing, but it, it definitely needs to be tight on your back. Okay, folks, this is five pounds of play. There. No. Okay, five pounds of clay. Again, in. It's like you're closing the door. Don't lift it. Don't push it down. Just in. Center. Yeah. <laughs> And no one was hurt. Like that. <laughs> no one was hurt. And then you can just have fun from there. So as I was explaining about the um, the idea of doing a, let me just show you. So like Carol talked about, we make a little divot in the top. Bring it in. She talked about this little stuff that comes out there, it's fine. Push down. Now, and now I'm just going to just very steadily in a, just in a constant force, I'm just going to push out. I'm pushing down just slightly to compress the bottom. About there. At that point, you would just Work on compressing the bottom of your pot like you would normally do. All everything from this point on is just normal ceramic thrown. Then you can just start building up from there and start building out a nice plant. There you go. Way to go, man. Now we're going to have someone. Throw a plate over to Catherine. Hey, Catherine, just um, your land. I'm going to throw a plate. This is uh, four pounds. And uh, Carol's going to walk me through it because I really wanted to. This plate told me that it would be absolutely the easiest thing. So, um, four pounds. Four pounds. Yep. Four, four pounds. <laughs> We had just just learned to make plates last week and successfully got six so far. They're nice too. They're very nice. It seems to be a form that a lot of potters would like to make and they're a little intimidated because it's an awful lot of opening that floor really wide and it's easy to get them off center. This tool really helps a lot with getting um, 
centered, and then the fingering are, are the, the opening finger is, is amazing for making plates. Well, while she's working here, um, the stronger does take a bit of learning. It's like driving a car. At first, you're thinking about it. You know, um, your your RPM, your speed, all of those things. The pressure are things that, at first, it takes a little bit to get used to. But in a very short period of time, it becomes second nature. You're really not even thinking about using the tool. You're you're thinking about what you're going to making as you're using the tool. Um, there is a sweet spot where, you know, your, your pressures and your overall speed, it just feels right. And once you're there, you got it. And uh, oh. here you go. You got it. Voila. Now you just get, you got a nice little bit of clay left to do your rim. I'm going to show them shaming. Yeah, chamois with plates is awesome. I always tell new potters when they get this tool to just wedge up maybe eight balls of like two pounds each and then just sit and just throw all eight of them. By the end of the eighth ball, you've got the tool perfectly set up. You're very comfortable with how it's working and it, it's just a great experience. Awesome. Good job. Good job. Wonderful. Oh, any questions, Jess? So people are uh, really like just picking their jaws up off the floor watching this. So a couple of questions. Can you use this on a standing up wheel? So if someone's a stand up thrower, will this work? Well, uh, yeah, actually it's, um, it's a great idea. Um, it's even better me physically, mechanically to do that. And yeah, I can adapt to, um, well, most of these, you know, attach to the deck, so there's no complication. Uh, even with the extension uh, legs that you can buy, I can still outfit that. But yeah, that's a great combination. That's what Carol uses. Um, that's how we started. Um, started with her back, we lifted her wheel, but then we go to the wrists and the hands, and then this is where the throwing aid started coming in and ultimately stronger. So people, well, people, you mentioned chip and dip, and now everybody wants to see that. I don't know if you, I know you got a lineup planned, so I don't know if that's possible. It might not be for today, but. You started you something. He, he mentioned that. You can show what the weed would make a chip and dip if you yeah. chose to. People are interested how you make the chip and dip. Oh, yeah. We might have to do a, you know, another episode on that. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We should. Maybe we'll have well, to do a, a live here. and have you come back for that. All right, so five pounds each. We got Patrick using the strong arm and Laurel using the hands. And we're making it fair. We're not gonna, we're gonna do it like you would normally do. We're not- gonna It's a competition. We haven't practiced, I haven't been practicing. And to be honest, and to be honest with you, I'll be honest, I haven't thrown since last August. So, um, so whatever happens, happens. Good luck. <laughs> I, yep. paid, I paid off all competitors before this book. 
We got this. I'm in big trouble if I win, but I won't. <laughs> okay, go. go. All right, here we go. Well, that didn't help. You're going to give her a fair chance here? Thank you. <laughs> there you go. My stuff wasn't oh, I think that's already center. Yeah. Really? All right. Go, Pat. <laughs> well, you're watching this. Look at the body of the Pat's sitting up more. She's leaning over. She's using a lot of effort. You may, oh, you're making the chip and dip. I'm trying to show it. So, you know, think about it as a professional. You know, it, it's, it's all about time and effort. And at the end of the day, how do you feel? And how much action you have gotten done, especially if you throw a water. You know, that's the killer. There are a lot of instances. Uh, people will choose to not use the centering tool for uh, smaller pieces, you know, fish. But once you get up at about five pound range, that's where you really start feeling it, and that's where the time starts coming. You have any questions for us, Jeff? There was a um Question about, could you adapt this for use with a jig? Can you adapt this for use with a jig? What? No. A jigger arm? Uh, yes. No, this is not meant to be a jiggering tool. Uh, the beauty of this tool is that it still gives you the freedom to create whatever it is you would like to make. That's that's the great part of the tool. If it's not going to be time. Uh, it is a production tool aid, but it's not a production tool. Fantastic. Yeah, this is a centering tool, not really a production tool, although you can make plates with it and, you know, other things. Never done it. Okay. Oh. So we have Andy who has never used oh. a strong arm pottery tool. Well, okay. Last, just, last couple of minutes. I'm going to we'll start this, set it back up. So we know. We'll get it set up for him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, well, in one piece, I've thrown, actually, I threw about a 25 pound bowl before. 25 um, pound bowl. Yeah, but most of like the largest stuff I do is in um, pieces. So throw one piece, throw another bowl, put them together. And if people throw with porcelain, you know, it gets very soft very quickly. Um, yeah. So you 
this is definitely going to help with that because you don't have as much time with centering. So you might get a few more pulls in before you get to the unfortunate point where I can't take any more. Yeah, it's much easier with the centering. I'm not down, sort of shoving the clay around. And it gets most of the work done instead of just having to. Um, yeah, you should use a paddle to get it completely yeah. centered. And it yeah. And if you need to make like an adjustment of the size of the thing, you can always, once it's centered, it's easier to keep it centered. It's getting it there. That's always the hard part. I know a couple of people in my studio who uh, either have or are developing carpal tunnel. And this is uh, somewhat of a godsend. We got about four minutes left. Just want to let you all know. And uh, for the folks that are trying to order, I know that we were doing, Mark was doing $25 off the first 50 that were ordered. And it uh, looks like they might have already been ordered. I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. Folks are saying that they went to the site and they're not seeing the deal. So, um, you know, you can always reach out to Mark after the this is over and, and find out if actually they've already hit the 50 or not. Um, while Andy's finishing up, we'll have uh, Mark um, give us a little wrap up on our, our session here, Mark and Carol. So, um, some folks would like to see how easy it is to take the arms off. Like, say, oh, I just want to move them out of the way off the wheel. Can you show how easy it is yes. to take that off? Or... Yep, literally, this just comes there off. There's, oh, on, oh, it there's a little, okay, all right. Mm. Right, yeah. So you got your strong arm and you want to move it, get off your wheel or move it to a different wheel. You just, this comes off very easily. Uh, the washer helps kind of let it slide, let the tools slide easily on top of each other. And then that comes off. You can wash this right in the sink. It's got a great finish on it. And you're good to go. Um, I've heard of students, we, here at our school, we do have a lot of them set up on the wheels for the students to use, but I've heard other facilities, people actually bring their strong arms into school with them. So in short, uh, Jessica and Kevin, thank you. Everybody in this room, thank you. Um, you know, it's hard to be in front of a camera and these guys did great. Um, I, I'm so uh, appreciative of the opportunity and all you guys watching also, thank you very much. Um, we got lots of videos on the website and we'll be adding more and, uh, you know, all the different applications. Uh, <laughs> bingo, there you go. You know, in short, um, the tool is, if you want to compare it to something, it's a difference between, you know, uh, say a carpenter uses a power saw versus using a hand saw. It has everything to do with doing the, the rough milling, the, the beginning start. How much time and effort do you want to spend? Um, and the bigger the log, the, the more you're going to wear yourself out. So this gives you a chance to, to have your fun. And, um, you know... If there's the health aspect, if it hurts, it's no fun. And, you know, if, if you're exhausting yourself, you're cheating yourself out of a lot of time that you could actually be spending on details, uh, texturing, glazing. Uh, you know, there's so many things. And, you know, the dehydration thing is huge. Um, you're using less water to throw. You can pull bigger and higher. Also, it's going to dehydrate quicker so you can get to your next step. You don't have to sit there and fan it. it you know, there's so many aspects to this that are beneficial to the pot. Fantastic. Thank you all so much, Marl, and everybody else at Strong Arm. It is an amazing tool. 
and you know what they're doing is just fantastic now I just want to share a couple things and a little uh, personal story so I've been making pottery for 22 years and I developed carpal tunnel syndrome started about 10 years ago but I didn't do anything about it and I just suffered through the pain last year I had to have bilateral surgery which means both hands and just as bad as mine was I couldn't have the the modern version where they just go in and make a tiny slit they had to do the full hand cut open both my palms to do the surgery so it was a pretty invasive surgery for me I couldn't throw for six months and knowing that I had to have the surgery done um, long-term implications are they cut through a lot of tendons that I'll never get full strength back to what I had before so it's just no matter what, I won't be able to throw 20 pounds of clay on my, I can't center 20 pounds of clay, just the big lump of 20 pounds, I can't do it. So I got a strong arm because I still want to make big pots. I don't want to be limited. And for me, I was struggling getting anything bigger than four pounds of clay. It just hurt and I just don't have the strength at this point. Um, so this is the second pot I made with the strong arm. And I have a Bailey Pro XL pottery wheel. This was five pounds of clay. So that was the second pot I made using the strong arm. The third pot I made with the strong arm is this, and it's about nine pounds of clay. And I sadly haven't had a chance to get back to it because I just got the strong arm last week. But it means that for me, I can throw big pots again. And I used to make sinks and that was a problem. I couldn't make them, but now I can. So this tool will not teach you how to throw. It will not teach you how to center. But if you do know the basics of throwing and centering, it will help you to throw bigger, also keep you from being fatigued, which was one huge thing for me. Could, could I throw this much without it? I could get there. I could get there with little balls of clay and centering them, but by the time I made one, I would be exhausted and I wouldn't be able to do another one. So for this, I could throw five of these in a day easily now because the strong arm makes it work for me. And there's a ton of questions about how it works, the technical aspects. Please reach out to Mark. He will gladly walk you through it. He'll help you get the right strong arm for you. When you get your strong arm, Mark and I did a FaceTime video and he walked me through setting it up. So there was no problems putting it on my wheel and he stayed with me while I made my first few pots. So it was a really great experience all the way around. Their customer service is amazing. If you have any questions at all, please just reach out to them. I know this won't be for everybody, but if you're out there and you think this might be for something, something for you, please consider it. Now, I, I believe we sold out of the 50 because folks were ordering and they were getting the discount and now they're not. So we'll see if Mark catches up. He wants to come back and do another demo. Maybe we can get him to come back and um, do another discount. We'll see. He makes each one of these by hand and they are well worth the price. All right. So that was an amazing thing. Strong arm will probably change your life. Actually, I'll say it will, not just probably, it definitely will. I will be back at 12.30. I'm going to be doing a wheel throwing demo, trimming demo, mostly trimming, but I'll throw a, a pot or two using the Speedball Artista wheel. I will not be using the strong arm on this little guy um, because of what we're doing today, and my strong arm is actually mounted on my bailey. So we'll do, I'll do some of those later for you all. All right, everyone, thanks for being here for the strong arm demo. I'll see you back at 1230 Eastern.